Well, Nora made that wonderful uh, accent. Uh, they say, I often say that uh, I'm actually not from Ireland at all, I'm from Billerica, and I get, this, <laughs> I get this accent from a correspondence course. It's, it's actually kind of true, you know, it's called speaklikeamick.com. <laughs> Very useful in Boston, in the city of Boston particularly, but when I was asked to do this, you know, we're used to writing things down again in radio, it's not, not common that we ad lib, but they say, talk about what you know, and really, when I grew up in Ireland in a small town of Clannacilty in West Cork, 3,000 people, my father was a butcher, my mother was a professional martyr. <laughs> <laughs> there were nine of us in the family, this is actually true, nine of us, uh, starting with Aileen, Mildred, Michael, Carmel, Margaret, James, Anne, me, and Raymond. Did I get them all? <laughs> my mother used to start at the beginning when she'd be shouting at me, she would start and go, Alien, Mildred, Michael, come here, come here, come here, Brian! She'd go eventually and get to me. But we grew up in a very, very crowded household, uh, first up, best dressed in that household. And it was a little chaotic, it genuinely was. We slept in two bedrooms, uh, not all nine of us because of the age difference. But there was chaos, literally, in those rooms especially when people were coming into dinner, which was a rare occurrence in those days in Ireland, the idea of entertaining. Again, butcher, living in the center of town, not a heck of a lot going on. But my parents would occasionally bring people in to dinner if they thought they were uh, obliged to do so, to welcome somebody to town. And one time when this happened, I remember we used to be so cold, nights like tonight, this weather really gets to me. This is why we left Ireland. I'm serious. <laughs> right there. It describes why we all emigrated. Uh, it's because of the dampness. But we used to have everything down on top of us except the alarm clock. So any coats, blankets, anything that we could get would be on top of us. And one night uh, during these rare occasions, my, my parents were inviting people into dinner and all hell broke loose on the third floor and scattering down the stairs, making a hell of a racket, about six of us complaining about what had happened. But mostly what had happened is somebody had torn all the buttons off of one of the coats that was lying on top of us. So we screamed in, much to the horror and embarrassment of my poor mother, saying that Millie has torn the buttons off the coat. And my mother said, oh, she ushered us out the door back upstairs and said, don't ever do that again. Well. Lo and behold, she was so embarrassed by the fact that we were holding, uh, putting coats on top of us and this was now being exposed to the neighbors, especially the fancy ones who were being invited in to dinner. I recall she came and lectured us after the, her visitors had gone home and said, don't you ever do that again. We don't use coats. We don't use coats as blankets. We use quilts. We use eider downs. Well, a few months later, the same thing happened. A whole bunch of warring kids got into all sorts of mischief upstairs. And as my parents were trying their best to entertain the people downstairs, again a scattering, a smaller scattering this time, ran down the stairs, clattered into the kitchen. And my sister Anne said, Ma'am, Brian had torn the sleeve off the eider down. <laughs> True story. 